Good morning and welcome to Bricolage with Pink Girly. I'm Pink Girly and this is my channel and today is a live stream and so I want to welcome all my guests that will be coming in but I also want to say welcome welcome to my replayers appreciate you all so very much and we'll just see who pops in my last two lives i've been working from a book called imaginary characters by karen o'brien and so she recommends that you draw a hundred faces good morning barbara how are you today nice to see you and so i've been numbering i'm not using she uses uh four by six i've been using three by fives because that's what i had available so i've just been messing around hi pam sitting in front of the TV, you know, sketching a couple of faces. I um, might be cheating a little bit. I tried one with, now she does ink. I tried one with ink. I just, I just was not happy. All right, Pam, you working on overalls? Good morning, Kathy. Lurk away, lurk away. If we need you, we'll just give you a little shout out. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry you're still not feeling well, Ange. I'm glad you're going to go see the doctor. Let us know how you make out, honey. We'll see, we'll see you maybe a little later. Um, I'm trying to think a little bit outside of the box with doing some of these faces. So I wrote my granddaughter's name and put a little face in her name. And then my grandson, Jack. And then for my two bonus babies. Raya Grace. I don't know if you can see the face I did for her. She's got the Y and the G, so I made those the eyes and put the mouth and nose in between. Hey, Nashua. Hello, hello. And this is my other grandbaby's name. I don't think they say Sophia, like our Sophia. I think they say Sophia. So I think it's more like fire. They tried to get Ray Grace to say fire, but... We call her Yaya. They call her Yaya. So I just put a little face in her name. So you can do all kinds of stuff. And um, I've been, hey, Malia. I've been just trying to work with some different shapes. And I think I've been cheating a little bit because I've been smudging my graphite. Good morning, Dar. So that's what I've been doing to keep my mojo going with Karen O'Brien and creating imaginary characters. So I was, I was rummaging around my desk and uh, trying to straighten up my shelf. I had, I had things sticking out everywhere. And so to, I was straightening that up and I came across something, um, oh, good morning, Devin, that I hadn't uh, seen in a while and actually kind of forgot about. Have you ever done that? Have you? Have you ever done that? This is a map of uh, a shore town. I think my brother-in-law picked these up for me. I have a stack of them somewhere. I, I really don't know where the rest of them are. And um, just want to make sure I'm not missing anyone. Welcome to all who coming are coming in. Don't forget, put things in um, caps for me. It's easier for me to pick up. Um, if you, you need me to see something, that would be great. Um, sometimes if you go to a diner, if you're at a shore point or a vacation point, you can pick up maps of the area. So, so it's, you know, a large piece of paper. And uh, I folded it to become pockets. And I had forgot I had done this. So this morning, I thought, well, wouldn't this be great? I'll just show you how I do it. Most of you probably know how to do this. Maybe some of the replayers don't. 
but you end up with a pocket here and a pocket here and then you've got a little pocket here and a little pocket here now i venture to say you can use any size piece of paper my papers that i've been using have been rectangle i don't know how it would look with a square and the larger piece of paper you know you get a nice size little folder a little folio and so this one, of course, is just white. But I pulled out some paper that I thought I might like to try to fold some other ones. Now, this one I just used regular cardstock. This is a Graphic 45 old cardstock. Um, and this was a little more difficult because, of course, there's a lot more bulk to the paper. So you want to, if you use cardstock, you want to make sure you're really creasing your folds. So this doesn't, I didn't really crease them that great. So this one doesn't fold um, flat as nice. But you know, you could, if you weren't too concerned about this well actually you wouldn't have to glue it shut you could glue a little piece of ribbon inside of here and inside of here you know and tie that shut or put ribbon around the outside and tie it shut so these are cute these would be great tuck-ins for a journal actually you could glue um, one side down and still use your tuck spot there so there's a lot you can do with one of these has anyone else here this morning folded one of these? I don't know if it's got a specific name. Good morning, Kimberly. So when I was digging through uh, some of my 12 by 12 boxes looking for larger pieces of paper, I found this, which I'm guessing is supposed to be a... Oh, what's the matter, Kimberly? Can't play today at the skin doctor. Oh, okay. Maybe it's just a regular. Hey, Leah. Good morning. Oh, I hope you hope it's okay. Hope you're okay there, Kimberly. Let us know. Maybe it's just a regular. All is well. Okay, thanks, Kimberly. Um. So this has some staining on it, which I don't mind. And I'm not sure how this one's going to turn out. I did have it folded. I guess when I purchased it or however I got it, it was already folded in half. So we'll just going to see how this one goes. So what I'm going to do first is fold it in half lengthwise. And as Chanya McGuire would say, hot dog. And hamburger fold. Now I don't know how old this paper is, or you know how it how well it's going to fold. It might you know not fold so great. So we'll say. And then once you get that folded, you're going to fold then into the middle, just like you were folding for a zine. It might be hard to see if you're working uh, white on white, white on white. So give yourself a good crease and then we're going to fold the other way in towards the center. Try to make sure everything is lined up and, you know, straight. You know how things go with Lori. Judy, good morning. It might uh, not go well. We'll just see. And then we're going to take those outside corners and fold them into that first line on all four corners. Ding, 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 ding. So I hope everyone is well this morning, doing okay. I'm looking forward to a day of being at my desk. I was at my mom's on Tuesday for her birthday. That's always an adventure anymore, going to mom's for a visit. And 
I met up with my daughter just briefly to give her some Valentine things for the grands. So then we had a call from the grands Tuesday evening. That's always interesting. Our grandson is four. My daughter had the, hey, Missy, good morning, had the, the computer set up so they could talk to us, you know, and we could see them well. And my grandson just kept putting his face up close to the screen so I could clearly, clearly see up his nose and see what was going on there. <laughs> they did have little parties at school, so some of it may have been sugar induced all right so once you have that you've got your corners folded in and then you bring your centers in all right so then what we want to do is you want to fold now i would just want to make sure this is on the outside so i think this way i, I want to come Yeah, I think you want to come up about a third, I'm thinking. I'm a thinking. Well, that's not really a third. That's more like a half. Maybe like two thirds. I'm going to try coming up two thirds. Oh, thank you, Judy. You're very sweet. I love you guys, too. All right. So now I'm going to fold back the other way. I think I might have want, wanted to do this the other way. So my roosters are. Yeah, let's. Well, let's finish. I can take it apart and redo it. I don't want to confuse anybody just in case Marty's lurking. So you want to come up about two thirds and then you bring your top down to the very edge. And depending on your paper, some paper is really thin, you know, like that map I showed you. That was a very thin, glossy paper. So that folded pretty easy. So then all you do is tuck this top flap into the bottom flap. And hopefully you can scoot it in there. You have to zhuzh. Maybe zhuzh it a little. Zhuzh, zhuzh, zhuzh. Oh, Hubby just sneezed. Are you sneezing? I'm not getting any not getting any slippage here on this one. Gotta have your slippage. So that once you get that going, that just scoops down in there. Then you just crease your folds again, and then you fold it in half. Oh, that's not too bad. I've got his, got the rooster head right there on the side. That's not too shabby. So you've got your pockets. Let me see where I have some. What did I do with my? Let's see if these will fit in here. This might be a little. Oh, here we go. So you've got a pocket here. And a little pocket here. Good morning, Gail. How you feeling today? And then you've got your little pockets in the back. You could scoot something in. And then you've got the pockets here as well. All right. And I would say, too, and I haven't tried this. I just thought of it. You know, you could put a couple of pages in here and just stitch them in. I think I'm, you're doing better. Wonderful. 
hurt when you woke up, but you got more pain meds and you're doing wonderful. Good. Keep those meds on your regular routine. So hopefully you can keep your pain at a couple, at a, um, you know, a point where you can manage it. So I think if I flip this the other way, design wise, it might look better. So we're, let's fold another one because some more folks have come in. And um, I pulled out, this is a large folio from a book that I'd taken apart. Hey, there's Shannon. Good morning. She's awake. She's awake. She's awake. Wait, wait. All right. So we're going to start at the very beginning. So we're going to take. Now, this is kind of um, a little lighter than scrapbook paper, but it is a little heavier book page. Oh, see, and I can see this isn't this paper is not creasing very well, but that's okay. We're going to go ahead and see how it turns out. Now you can use painty papers, you know. You could decorate this up, put this on your jelly plate, stamp it, stamp it. So I did a long fold. Now I'm coming into the center with my outside edge of my paper. Don't forget, use caps for me if there's anything I need to see. Thank you so very much. And we're going to bring that other side into the fill. This may not hold up too good. This is not. This is an older book, so it's kind of um, doesn't feel brittle, but see, I've got a little bit of a slip there now. Let's just carry on and see how it goes. So I'm bringing my top edge into that first fold line, and I'm doing the same on this side. Sometimes it's hard to see that fold line. Even with my glasses on. Now we're going to flip it this way. And you're going to do the same thing at this end. And then these get folded back in. Now you want to make sure, see I got a little bit over the line there. So you want to make sure you're just up to the fold line, not over, because you want this to fold in nicely. So this is what you have. This is what it looks like at this point. All right. So then we'll flip it over. And you just have to judge what you're looking for is you want, you need a little bit of room here so that when you fold this over, you're able to tuck it in. So on this paper, it might depend on your size of your papers, but you know, it's not really half, I don't think. The other one seemed like it was more of a two thirds thing. And then you're going to bring that right down to that bottom edge. Give a fold. And then you're going to just tuck that top sheet, that top flap, I guess, into the bottom. And this is a little bit fiddly, but you know, just some paper slides in. Of course, you know, just if you have a slip of paper, it slides in a little easier. It's 
It's like getting on pantyhose. There we go. So you want to do that bottom one just a little bit shorter so you have room for this to go in. Malia said, I keep thinking of you, Dar. We wanted Alice in Wonderland the other day, and my daughter keeps calling herself Treasure Cat. <laughs> I'm not too great with folding either, Gail. I did that one live where I have this really cool folding book. Oh my gosh, I was so confused. See, now my paper, it's not, this one was not the best paper. But again, you have your two little pockets. And you could use that back there. And you've got these pockets too. So you could easily glue this into a, a, an altered book or a journal. All right, shall we do it one more time? I've got one more sheet of paper here. I was anxious to see how it folded up. I don't know how this will fold. This again is a, a large folio from a book I took apart and this one I coffee stained. Let's see if this folds. This might fold a little better. Mitch says one more time please. You're going to do the long fold like uh, Tanya would say a hot dog fold. And then take your outside edge, fold it into the middle, into the center. Now this is a little easier because the paper is coffee dyed. And I can really see my line. Zines are difficult. I think it's the paper. Now we're going to come back in with that out, other outside edge into the center. And they say if you start creasing from the center out, you get a better crease. It's apt to be more straight. I don't know if that's true. So then you're going to open it back up. Take this outer edge. I'm going to have to show this to my grands. They would get a kick out of making their own little book. Fold that in so you have, you know, a point. Oh, no, Nettie. Keep an eye on that. All right. And then you do the other end. Fold in. Making sure you're coming to the line, not over the line. All right, now once you've got your corners in, bring them back in. And then you're going to flip it over because you'll want your folded corners on the underneath side. Make sure I cut that. Okay. I'm going to bring the bottom up. Do that a little fold. And then the top comes down to meet your bottom edge. Make sure you're giving yourself a good crease. And then you're just going to pick that up and slide it into that bottom section.
puff out the air. <laughs> And then fold it in half. And there you have it. So you can leave it the way it is. You can decorate it. You could stitch pages. I'll have to try stitching some pages in the center. Wouldn't that be fun? And then different size paper you use, you know, the smaller you get, the little more fiddly it is to um, fold them. There you have it. Of course you wouldn't need them stick out. I'm just showing you, you have a pocket. And... Um, yeah, like I said, with this one, you know, you could do a cluster on the front. You could run and tape ribbon around it. So you could tie this one shut. This was with the cardstock. So does anyone remember folding cootie catchers back in the day? Not me, Judy. Oh, Dar remembers. No, not me. How about that? This was a way before technology. Was it like, hey, Joni, good morning. Happy Thursday to you. Was it, was um, cootie catchers like a form of origami or? Huh, Shannon remembers. Okay, so that was the first thing I had today while folks were coming in. So welcome again to all who are here in our live chat uh now i mentioned earlier that the last this one was cardstock yes mitts and this one was 12 by 12. the other sheets were more like um i'm gonna i'm gonna guess and say 17 by i don't know 10 or 11. okay and I, like I said, I haven't tried a square. Can you spare a square? All right. So when I was um, working on my imaginary cre characters, I keep wanting to say creatures, and different things we were doing, I talked about transfers with Golden Matte Medium. Oh, you're welcome, Mets and uh, tape transfers came up. I remember that I had done them, but I hadn't done any recently. And so I watched a video and I'm gonna show you what this gal on the video, there's tons of videos. I didn't write this gal's name down. Lori, they are those things that you move both your fingers to open. <laughs> yeah, you go. Oh, yeah. Oh, to do the square, you're saying. Yeah, yeah, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, I knew you meant think things, not things. Yeah, yeah. Devin's saying if it's square, you put your fingers up in those t four little pockets. Oh, that's a cootie. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Thanks, Devin. See, Devin knows my brain does not. Gotcha. Oh, thank you, Devin. Yes, I know. I didn't know they were called a cootie catcher. We used to put boys' names on them and stuff in school. Anyway, you might remember that my transfers with the uh, gel medium and the golden matte medium were not too successful. And um, so I looked on YouTube, of course, and um, watched a gal do some tape transfers. So all you need is packing tape. She recommended packing tape and then some kind of paper. Now, she did a variety of things. She did uh, tissue paper. She did a napkin. Uh, she did scrapbook paper. So I have a few here that I did ahead of time. I haven't taken them off of the tape yet. I thought I would just wait and do that 
with everyone to see if I could further embarrass myself. So basically, so these are the ones I already have ready to go. So you just take a piece of paper and you take your packing tape. And you just snip off a piece, put it down on your paper. And then she recommends burnishing it down with a piece of, you know, you can use your bone folder, a plastic card, whatever you got. You know, trim off your edges. And then she recommends putting uh, your paper in warm water. Well, Lori didn't do that. Lori's just sitting here at her desk. And so I'm just going to use my spray bottle. And yesterday when I was trying it out, no, this one got now, she said sometimes the sticky remains and other times it doesn't. So you, if you're going to put it down on a journal page or any kind of a project, you might want to think about adding some glue to it to make sure it stays where it needs to be wanted. So this one is, this one was a napkin. So that turned out, and you know, it's just a ripped off piece of napkin. So that one I think turned out fairly well. This one was a piece of uh, Tim Holtz scrapbook paper, which I didn't get all the paper off, but you can see this one didn't transfer as well. All right. So here's the one we just taped. I'm going to spritz the back. Hey, Shaz. Now, my spritzer is not the... I should have gotten a different spritzer. And maybe the warm water does make a difference. I don't really think so, personally. So then you just start rubbing like we would if we were using the matte medium. Cool idea, Malia. I missed her, Malia. I miss Malia. I might teach my daughters how to make one so she can pass it on to her third grade class. Hey, that's an idea. That is a good idea. My granddaughter would love that. In fact, my granddaughter, I think she started with art stuff and her teacher. Now, she's second grade. Her teacher asked her if she wanted to start an art club. Good idea, Malia. So, of course, this takes a little while. This is where patience comes in. I have patience for different things. This is not particularly one of them. But if you have an old um, magazine, and I don't mean old like a, you know, an old issue that you're throwing out. I mean like a vintage type. Some of the ads, you know, if you're willing to rip out a page or two. And I think ideally what you're wanting to do is get down to that cellophane. Chaz is off to bed. Let's see. Let's have a look. Yeah. Yeah. This is working. Now, I'm not going to do them all. I mean, I'm not going to do them all completely. I'm going to show you because this is, takes forever and a day. But you want to take your time because you don't want to rub off the transferred part. Right? You just want to take off your paper layer. So let me get this one to where we can see. Probably a paper towel would be a good idea. A good idea. Let's 
So this one, can you see? Let's get another piece of book paper. Can you see? Uh, I don't have any. Wait a minute. Let me get a piece of this card here. This might be better. So you can see where, even that looks cool, where you leave some of the paper on and then you rub some of the transfer. Okay, so now I have, which I did ahead of time, this is not it. This is a napkin. I never thought of a napkin. So here you go. Hers turned out. Let's see if this one turns out. I just didn't think. I just thought a napkin would totally disintegrate. Now, like I said, my Eiffel Tower was a napkin. Yes, you could just leave the center and put a photo behind it like a vintage. Yeah, right, Deb. Yeah. So let's see. K and L. <laughs> Devin wishes K and L were further apart. <laughs> I don't know. I can't tell yet. I think it might be working. It might just be working. I need some uh, background music like Stephanie had last night. SMD Design, Stephanie. Do, 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 do. I wish I had a private assistant. To, to deal with K and L. K and L or trouble. Trouble with the keyboard. I would like a house cleaner. I worked at a, a Bible college for years. And so a lot of folks that I work with worked with at that time had um, been on the field as missionaries and this one lady she lived in Spain for a while and it was just a regular thing it was just like a normal thing for for them to have a housekeeper okay Barbara hey good morning Jilly nice to see you I know right Gail oh my gosh oh, would it be a dream come through and to tell you the truth I don't even do the cleaning because uh really my back and and some of my other issues makes it very difficult for me I can do little things but if I could do too much well I'm just out of commission for a couple of days so I would just you know take the uh the bulk of it off of my hubby of course, now he's retired, so he doesn't mind. But. So there's the napkin. Now, that's only a portion of it. But look how beautiful that is. Girls, huh? Come on. Now, this was wide, a wide square piece. And my tape, of course, is only that wide. So I just overlapped a little. But you really can't, you can't distinguish right so that's okay then i tried it on this is a piece of calendar so this is pretty heavy so let's give this a go now we all know you can glue down 
and um, now this might need more water. I might need to sit a little while. This has got that slick uh, high gloss. This may need to sit in the All right, I'm just going to get this one started and let this one sit for a minute with some water on it. Um, I would not have thought of, a, I mean, a napkin is a fiddly and you couldn't get that see-through look, right? So the tape makes it a lot user-friendly. You know, you could cut it, you could do a lot of different things with it. You could really even use it for the background of a card. Well, I guess you could either way, but it's kind of neat. This is, I just tore out a page of one of my, um, uh, da -da -da. hi, Kathy. One of my uh, ideals magazines just ran the tape. I like the paper. So this should work fairly well. I had a hard time ripping this page out, I dare say. But um, I got to start using some of my stuff. I get so I get so very attached. <laughs> uh, yeah. But in the ideals, uh, as some of you may or may not know. Um, most of you probably do know there's a lot of poems and stories and things like that so if you can find a poem and just cut the poem put your tape on right and do your transfer that might look nice okay Jilly um, that might look nice on a journal page And like I said, if the image is larger than your tape, just double it up. Double your pleasure, double your fun. It's, it's under there. It's kind of, this one, it was light. This, one, this image was light. Let's see if we can see this. I'm really liking that napkin. I guess it would depend on the napkin too now, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it now? So here you can see on the edge where I did not rub the image off. And of course, this was a light yellow. It's a light golden color. You can see a little bit of the where it's been transferred. So this is a very muted, subtle look, but it, you know, it worked, it's working fine. So there's that one. Now let's come back to this calendar page. That paper has soaked up most of that water I spritzed on here. Now, the folks that I've seen do this, of course, they have a little tub of, a little dish of water, a little tub of water, and they, dip the whole piece in and work that way but I didn't do that I just thought my spritzer would work and uh, the gal I watched said warm water but this this seems to be working fine but like I said this is a calendar just going to see if I can get a little bit here Okay. Well, I think it's happening. I can see buildings. So you're just trying to remove the layer of paper and uh, not the ink. You want the ink to stay adhered. Uh, oh, let's see. I 
it's a little messy. Now this is more, um, I, I don't know, I think I'm down to, to having all the paper off. But this color is so intense on this um, calendar. There might be a little more paper I can get off. Let's just say. You can feel it, you know, with your finger. You can feel the little, the really, really little crumblies. Oh, okay. Kathy Arbor said if you take a fine uh, grit sandpaper to it, and that would be the back where you're trying to remove the paper before you put the water on it or put it in water, it comes off easier. So this is working as well, and uh, it looks cool, but it's not, of course, it's a heavier, more concentrated. Yes, Kathy, I took the layers off of the napkin first, and it was just a single layer. Good question. I should have mentioned that, but thanks for asking that. Yeah, napkin was just a single layer with the design on it. Where's my, okay, I've got one more to show you. This is just a magazine, magazine print. And again, I wanted this image was, my tape was not wide enough. So I just overlapped the tape a little bit. My little spritzer, the little top doesn't spring up as quickly as it should. I see some more folks have come in. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Oh, I did put tissue paper. I did put, this is tissue paper. I did do that one. I didn't think I put, I thought that was just, hmm. I thought the uh, magazine paper would loosen up easier. There it goes. All right, so I'm going to start this one and do like I do with the, with the uh, calendar. Just going to spray that some more. Let that soak. This is a piece of tissue paper. I just saw that I have tape on this. It was hard to see. Hi, Kel. Welcome, welcome. So, of course, tissue paper, we all know, is similar to a napkin, but different. The texture is different. And again, I'm not going to do this whole strip. So we can get moseying on to the next project. Although I do have one more thing I want to suggest and try. Because we can't just leave well enough alone. And maybe some of you have tried this. We'll see. Oh, this looks so cool. <laughs> Hold on. Let me get. So this is the tissue paper. Lovely. Just lovely. Maybe I'll take this opportunity to have a little sip of water. You get yap, 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 and then you're, you get a little parched. So 
So Kathy, Calico Kate and I were chatting the other day and I said, you know, I wonder if when I'm doing the tape transfers, what would it look like if I transfer on the tape? Okay, can you see that one? Can you see that this is that little luncheon basket there is see-through. What if you turn what you transferred into tinkle tape? Now, that's my term for, I don't really know what they call it. But you can take cellophane tape and make it look like it came out of an 1800 book or taped onto a recipe. And Johnny from Junk Journal Shop, I think is her channel, was kind enough to show me a long, long time ago how to make tinkle tape. And I'll show you my tinkle tape in one moment. And there you can see where it's see-through. Kathy Arbor says, Golden has a medium, and you put on a transparency, and then you can print on it and peel it off. Whoa. I don't know that. I don't think I know that cell cellophane song. Anywho. This is my tinkle tape. I just have a piece of plastic and I put some cellophane, just regular cellophane tape, clear. Although you can do the frosty looking kind too, I believe. Um, the kind you use, you know, to wrap Christmas presents or birthday presents. I just put several strips on and then you want some alcohol ink. And you want something that looks like, to me, someone's tinkled on it. Okay, sorry, might be TMI. No one has tinkled on this tape, okay? This, this is alcohol ink. Now, the color I have is called Latte. And all you do is take a piece of tape. I've got my large tape here, my packing tape. And packing tape is basically, you know, you know, cellophane tape. Let me see if I can get this. So I have an empty space right here. So I'm just going to put this down. And the reason that you put it on, now you can stop and make this when you, when you need it. But I like to make it ahead. So I have a sheet of it. If I'm working in a journal and I want a piece of it, then I can just pull this out, lift it up. Sometimes there's some stick left. Sometimes there's not. I like to add extra glue just because when I put it down, then I know it's going to stay where it is. Okay. So now I've got my packing tape here. So you're just going to take your alcohol ink. If you can open it, mine came with a cracked lid and I didn't send it back and I did put tape around it, but uh, now I've got my alcohol ink. So it's got a little nozzle there and you just, you know, and I usually take a Q-tip and rub it around. And then you can make it as dark or light as you want. Now, I like it with, you know, those kind of um, patterns on it. Let me see. Let me, let me put some white underneath there. But see, that's, you know, that's real light. And if you like it like that, leave it like that. But I like it to be more pooled and more stained 
and that'll take a little while. Now, if you're in a hurry, like Lori, you can put your heat gun on low and uh, dry that and, you know, it'll work. It's, I, I think it's a four, I think this might just be considered plastic, but you could stick it to acetate. You know, so now my question was to myself when I was making the transfers, what would that look like if I made some of it into, you know, look like some tinkle, tinkle tape. So that's what I was going to try while you're here with me. So let's see what I have here. Yeah, me too, right? I'm going to use, I'm going to try the, um, the butterfly. So I'm just going to put that aside. So remember, this is cellophane tape. We did the transfer. But now I'm going to put some alcohol ink on here. And you don't have to have it, you know, this latte color. Say you're going to transfer and you're working in a book and you like rose colors and the book in your colors is kind of rosy and you know you're doing orange or you want something really green try it with that you know do a sample this is dehydr yes now if you've got an image you may not you know you just you do what you want but me thinks me like it. All right. So then we have this one. See, I still have a little bit of stick left there. Now this one, we had said, we, well, we, I had said, I kind of liked the idea that I still have a lot of the book of the music print around and it's just I was just transferring in the center let's try a little bit of this on this piece now I just like smushing it around because then I can cover the area you don't really have to do that you could just treat your edges you know find your find your own niche but I gotta say this is one of my better ideas I might have to do a might have to do a light bulb moment video on this Malia says I've been watching a lot of great alcohol ink fits really okay and it must be the craft God saying Malia stop hoarding those inks and use them so I'm sorry. I'm not trying to pat myself on the back, but hey, I think these look really cute. Really cute. But like I said, this is going to take a little bit to dry. So if you're in a hurry, you have to be careful with your heat gun because if it gets too hot, you know, you're going to melt your cellophane, right? So you have to be very gentle if you're going to put a heat gun to it. But you just put this aside and, and let it dry. and. Uh, there you go. All right. So that ends this portion of my live. <laughs> Let's put this stuff aside. And as I said earlier, the last two lives I've been working from Karen O'Brien's book, um, Imaginary Characters. And when I did my original... I wasn't too keen on how that turned out, especially with the textured portion. Uh, I used the gel medium and it was okay, but I, I, I did a light coat because of the uh, time frame and wanting it to dry. Um, okay, Gail's going into lurking mode, no problemo. Oh, you're welcome, Devin. And um, 
and I said I wanted to try texture paste. So I went ahead and I did that. So I took a piece, I didn't work in a journal. I took a piece of um, cold press watercolor paper and I started to create a background. And I used some of the techniques that Karen shares in her book. And um, so I have that to show you. Hello, Teresa. Welcome in. Welcome in. So this is how it turned out. So at the market, at the virtual craft vendors market, I purchased this die cut. I thought it looked cool. And so I cut a few of those out on just some book pages. So I put some of that down. And then I put some tissue paper down, had the big butterfly there. And then I used a flower stencil and I used textured paste. Now, I don't, thank you, Devin, I don't um, clean my stencils. So I'd gotten some residual color off of my stencil as I put my textured paste in. And this is all tissue paper here. And then I took some, um, hey, Kathleen, nice to see you. Welcome in. Then I took my Inktense watercolors and used the cold, goldish yellow color and kind of like a, a brownish red and slop that over top. And then I had said, I think on my last slide, I might have mentioned when I originally read the directions for the first Karen O'Brien project I did, I misread about the ink. And I thought I was supposed to use waterproof. I was supposed to use, no, water resistant. I was supposed to use waterproof ink. So <clears throat> I do have calligraphy ink, but I decided for just not too much money, I went ahead and I ordered what she uses, which is the Dollar, 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 Roni FW acrylic ink. Maybe FW means fluid. I'm not sure. But I just got this. So as I was looking at this, with Karen's technique and her imaginary characters, she draws faces or looks for faces or images in her collage work. And so I was looking at this last night and I'm thinking, this looks like a wink of an eye this could be an eye and then i've got a little bit of a maybe a mouth or could be a nose so i thought i would take my ink I'm a little nervous to do it but i'm thinking about i don't know if i want to use a brush or use the dropper i'm i'm more comfortable with a brush so i might just pull out a brush and be on the safe side of this coin. And then I thought I might just see if I can get that face to pop out a little bit. So let's let's give this a go. All right. Now this comes with an eyedropper, which of course since then I found an eyedropper, and of course I had my pipettes. Pipettes. And let's see, let's take a little, let's just see how the ink works. So I'm just taking, oh, I've got tape on that one. Let's take another page from over here. If you're taking books apart. Oh, good idea, Devin. I don't think I have my, um, my phone here. That's a good idea. <laughs> Destroy. Hold on. Let me see if I can get my hubby to get my phone. Honey, could you grab my phone? 
my cell phone, see if it's over there, but I think it might be on my, I don't think I have a plugged in, but maybe I, I don't think I, maybe I do have it out here. Can you see it over there? Not on my cable? Maybe I have it out here. Thanks, son. I think I have it out here. Oh, you have such a mess. Oh, here we go. Here it is. I'm married to a good old boy. Okay, let's see. Good idea. I would not have thought of that. Okay. Photograph. Good, good. All right. So I just want to see how this ink reacts. Okay, let's see. I see a face in the bottom right corner too. Oh, like a like a little tiny one, like a little um comic kind of mask thing. Kathy and a little cat in the bottom left. Hmm, not seeing the cat. Isn't it funny though how you can see? I just want to see how this, like the consistency of this ink, and I haven't. messed with it at all. Oh yeah, that's pretty nice. That's pretty nice. All right. So up here, you can see that line from the edge of the butterfly wing. And what Karen has done on some of her pieces is she puts the ink and she lets it drip. So I'm going to try that right here. I'm really nervous, but, you know, it's just paper. Really, you know, it's just paper. So let's have it. Let's just have at it. Got a little bit here and just a little bit there. I don't know if this will drip. Not really. But then once it dries, it's permanent. So I'm going to spritz it. Now, I don't know that I want to have the eye drip but maybe I do I don't know let me lay my ink dropper off to the side and I'm just we'll see now this is wet I just kind of see an eye lid kind of thing here. And I, I just, I want to paint this, but I'm not sure if I, this would like be the nose. Probably, right? I'm not really seeing a mouth. Unless over here could kind of, but that would be off kilter. So let's just start painting in some of this. Now, should I let this drip? What do you think?
Now, normally I would flip this around. I'm trying to do this where I don't flip her. And I want to get my, I know how I am. I'll end up putting my fist in that white stuff. I'm trying to be uh, aware. It dries pretty fast. That little nose part is already dry. I think I am going to flip it just because... I don't want to put my right hand in that. Now, one of the other things that Karen O'Brien did, um, she then mixed some ink in uh, matte medium and painted that all over her page and then wiped it down. I don't know that I want to do that on this one. So, I mean, it's your decision. You know, you do what you creatively feel like you can do or want to do. I might drip that over there. So, what do you what do you think, girls? See, if I put this, if I colored that in, well, let's do this. Look at this. Just need some lips. I know. I don't know where to put, I don't know where to put the lips. I don't see. All right, down here. I'm going to outline with the ink this portion of the stencil of a flower that I've got. And then I'm going to ink in where I'm seeing that mouth and that those eyes. Yes, needs lips. I know. I'm nervous about the lips. Look, this almost looks like a headdress on this one. Maybe just here. Oh, there's Journey. Hi, Journey. I see the side view of a guy on the side with the glasses. Which side, Journey? see it on the left or the right.
I'm concentrating. Whoops. Right beside the face you're working on. What about some lashes? On this eye. I'm not seeing the I'm not seeing the man. You see him, Kathy? I don't see him. <clears throat> Is he in this area here, like underneath the eyes? The lips aren't underneath the nose. Yeah, I'm thinking about if I make this the nose. Make the mouth bigger. Right by the lady coming onto the picture. I'm giving her a big old nose. Oh, by the little lady. Oh, all right, hold on. We've got to adjust this here. All right, so I kind of want to do maybe over here a little bit because I kind of give the side of her face. I'm thinking about eyelashes on this eye. Or should I leave it alone? Maybe if I look in the camera on my screen, maybe I'll see the man. Oh, don't see the man. Well, I have one more thing I want to get to, but I was thinking that works. You think that's better, Devin? Okay, great. Um, there's a lot of different things I know you can do, right? But just to make it easier on myself to kind of wrap this up, I would like the edge of my piece to be darker. So I'm going to get out one of my Timmy. Um, Distress crayons. Well, maybe I might get out, might get out more than one. Oh, this is this one has a shimmer to it. I haven't really used any of those yet. Um, I know I have like a firecracker. I've got that. It's always the one you the one you want's always on the bottom. What's this one? This festive berry. I don't want festive berry. Oh, what the heck did I do with that? I'm not seeing the one I want. Well, that's annoying. Where did I put it? 
Oh shoot, well there's vintage. We can always do the vintage. And this gold color might work. I know I have a crackling campfire or something, but who knows where I put it. I think that's a little too bright. See how this looks. I'm just going to lightly scribble in some spots. And then add some gold. This isn't gold. This is called Rusty Hinge, but it kind of looks goldish. And then I'm going to add some of my photo vintage photo. Now I may come back in here at some point and add some uh, embossing powder to some of my flowers. Might, I don't know, I think it might be, might be cool. And I think on this occasion, I want to use a brush and some water. I also could come in with a Stabilo or some colored pencil and maybe define the edges of her face so it pops out a little bit more. But this ink is still drying. I'm not going to take time to dry it because I've got about a half hour. No, no. Oh, no, I have time because Kathy doesn't come on till one. You can give her the essence of a chin. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's do this. Get my edge edge going here. Get a little something, something on the edge. Of out of frame there, but all I'm doing is just taking some water on my brush and um, moving this distress crayon around a little bit. I think that looks a little better. And then you can, you know, let that dry, add a little more. Of course, it's going to continue to move. But um, it's pretty good. Or I'm going to use my heat gun just a little bit. Yes, the Stabilo is a good idea for her chin. Okay. little part of the nose um that's not really good though. oh i should have used red i could have used red on her lips i have red ink all right so i think i have a stability in here all right let's start out Easy. Let's start it out easy. Let's start over here. Now I'm fairly new to using a Stabilo. I've had them for a while, but I don't really use them much. So I'm going to dampen my brush and 
start moving that a little bit. Hey, Kathy Burke, how are you? All right, let's see. Kind of like under this flower here. Maybe we can kind of give her a little bit of a chin. Three Cathy's are filling the house. Cathy's are taking over. Okay, I kind of like that. I'm thinking a piece of tinkle tape might look nice. Let me try this. And then I was thinking about spattering some in it. Uh -oh. So I think I've improved a little bit. Um, so this was my first um Karen O'Brien project and I did rework her eye so I finally got her where I you know I was fairly satisfied oh thank you Kathy and then the second one was this little gal which again I wasn't using the right kind of ink so I had some issues you know, but I, but I think she got better. And then I was messing around on just a piece of watercolor paper and did my background. And then I just saw that face kind of pop out at me. So now I'm thinking I want to spatter some ink. I'm going to try to keep it around this area, but I'm not too concerned if a little bit gets on our face. And I don't think I have to really water that ink down too much. So let's just see if I can, let's see if this guy will work. See if I need to water this down at all. Oh, thank you, Devin. I am going to wet my brush a little bit. Yeah, that should be fine. Let's see. I do love spatter. Oh, thanks, Kathleen. I did get her chin a little, her little chinny chin chin a little bit. But um, I'm really okay with that because I, I do love Miss Spatter. I'm just going to see how 
Oh yeah, boy, that's this this is nice. This ink is nice. Huh? That's just what's left over on my brush from my spattering. Love that. That's I'm gonna have to practice a little. Thank you, Shannon. Seek and find art is so much fun. I wouldn't even have thought that call it that. So I'm going to say this one is done for now. Like I said, I might come back in and put some embossing powder. Not embossing powder, some glaze. You like her mouth? Oh, thanks, Star. And uh, hit some of these petals. So for now, I'm going to put her aside. And so the next thing I wanted to suggest to you all is if you have some watercolor paper, take some squares of it. And so I've got three squares and I'm going to use my ink tents uh, blocks because I want it to be, I don't know what I'm going to do with it going forward and I don't necessarily want the color to move. So I'm going to use my ink tents because if I use that, um, once it dries, it's not going to move. So I can put any kind of medium, collage, draw, you know, whatever. And I don't know, Kathy Arbor probably knows the terminology for this too. I, I don't know if there's a term for this technique. So what you do is you take your, now I have all my supplies here. My Some of my supplies just went ale. A wall. Okay, here we go. Now I just spritz down my blocks of paint and I'm going to take just, I'm going to just take my, uh, what is that in the water? A watercolor brush. Let me see. Get my paper towel. And I'm going to take some clear clean water make sure my brush is pretty clean and if it's not it's not that big of a deal really to tell you the truth and i'm going to wet down my watercolor paper now this is cold press You can just use what you have. It might work on a, a nice mixed media paper too. I'm not sure. So then I'm just going to grab some different colors from my palette here. And I'm just going to start plopping some on. Make kind of like little puddles. Put together some colors that you like in particular. Or, you know, if you have a, a certain, um, oh, hubby sneezing again project and add some of my tealy greens in just random you can do them all one color or I kind of got a blend just you know really saturate it and then you take a piece of, now I've used these before, a piece of uh, saran wrap. You put it down and you just kind of smoosh it. And as we all know, saran wrap only sticks to itself. So you just let that dry. You just smush. Now, when I did this intuitive or spontaneous art, thank you, Kathy. I didn't even think to look what <laughs> might be called. So let's do another one. So I'm just now used the wrong water. So this one's a little, the water's a little dirty. So let's go black. Let's go black and gray. 
Now you can put some, I tried some, I'll show you in a minute, where I put it at the top. Try to get on a pretty good amount of paint and then spritzed it. Kind of let, let it drip a little bit. And run down the bottom. Let's see, let's get something bright on the bottom here. Have you ever sprinkled salt? Yes, it's cool, right, Leah? Ugh. Or if, if you let this dry and then spritz it, you can get some cool looking uh, movement. I want this a little wetter. Of course, these are gonna take a little while to dry. You can, of course, use your heat gun on this as well. But you do get a better, I think you get a better effect if you let it dry naturally. So you get the idea, right? I don't need to do this third one. And I did try one. Once I put the wet on the paper and added the paint, Barbara said, gee, and I was going to strip naked and wrap myself in plastic wrap and greet my husband at the door tonight, I think. Oh, oh, I think whoever said, yeah, Kathy, do both. Definitely do both. Um, I put golden matte medium on it and then put the plastic wrap on to get a little bit of texture. And I'll show you that. I have, I did, did some, you know, ahead so that we could play with them but they're already dry so i'm going to put these aside very easy right now i had explained this technique or talked about it anyway on one of my lives and i said that i was involved with a hop with mary from the mary Otier, and um i had one little sample that popped up under my nose. And where did it throw? There he is. Okay, so I want to be able to show you that. All right, so let's clean this up a little bit. I'll get that off to the side. So these are some that I had worked on so we could use them today without having to use the heat gun or you know we wouldn't have time for them to dry naturally so I use just diff some different colors this one of course is all just one color And you can use, you know, shimmer paint. You can use whatever. Now, see, I see a face in this one almost immediately when I look at it. And you don't have to necessarily look for faces. You can do anything on this. This is one of the ones I had used in the hop that I did with Murray. And, um, I mean, she and I didn't do it together. But, you know, it was, it was her event. And I participated. Um, but now I see right now. Even though I outlined some of these lines with a Sharpie pen, you know, right there I see a nose and that looks like an eye in the top of somebody's head. And then, of course, you can turn them all different ways. But I see a face in that one. Again, this is, this is the one that I put the... Um, matte medium on and so you may not be able to tell and I just slapped some on I wasn't really paying attention but I've got some nice texture down here it's not real flat I see an eye an eye a mouth and a little nose when I turn that one that way, I see two like 
footprints there. So this is what I have to work with. Now, I was thinking I would use my Sharpie pen, but now I'm thinking maybe I want to use that ink. That ink's really cool. Uh, uh, let's just, so does anybody else see anything? Yes, coffee staining would be so cool. Definitely, definitely. I don't necessarily have to be seeing faces, but it's kind of what I am seeing. Like right here, it almost looks like, you know, sunglasses. And these are the cheeks. And I see a mouth here. Kathy Arborwell, I wasn't pretending. It was an original idea. <laughs> All right, so, oh, I wonder how these, I still have to mess around with my Tombos. I haven't messed around with them in a long time. All right, let's see. So I want to use either my ink and a brush, I think. Well, I could use the other too. Um, the, well, maybe we can do it all. The blue one, I see a fox or an owl. This one. I thought about doing owls today. A fox or an owl. Well, you said, Oops, girl, Upcycle Studio Kelly Weiler is a fun, intuitive artist. She's, oh, that's cool. Upcycle Studio. If one of my mods has a moment, maybe they could find that. Probably several of us would like to take a peek at that. Thanks for sharing her name, Leah. I'm not seeing the owl. No, I don't think so. But it could be, I guess, Barbara. All right, there we go. Kat's got it. Thank you, Kathy. Hmm. All right, so this one I'm just going to, I'm just going to, you know, I wonder what it would be like now that I'm sitting here thinking about, see, I just keep thinking about stuff. Keep thinking. And this is how, it is for us right you just you start with something and then you see something else you see it too an owl in the wee upper right an owl in the wee upper right hmm i'm just wondering how this might look if rather than outlining i take some watercolor pencils and do maybe some shading. Let's see if I can get some shading going on. Let's see. Let's see what we got here. I'm going to pick out some similar colors maybe. Um, let's see how this see how this goes. Rory's running out of room to sit things. That's the problem here. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to work on this one while you all are looking at this one. Can you see okay? And see if I can get this to do what I want. What I want it to do. I'm going to put this one and this one here. Barbara says that's where she sees it. So Kathy, Arbor, and Barbara are on the same page with the blue one. Okay, Leah said the Weiler, I don't remember the first name, um, taught me intuitive art and other painting techniques that can transfer into mixed media. Nice. Okay. Gonna put so I should have gotten a different uh, water dish so I could keep some clean water. 
All right, so I'm going to take some colored pencils while you're looking at some of these different images and fuss around with this one. So I got some dark on this in this brush. I need another paper towel. The colorful page reminds me of the scribble flowers from Janet Nash. I'm behind on Janet Nash. I see flowers on this one too. All right, so now I'm gonna take this yellowy orange color, put some here, and a little bit of red maybe here. my brush clean as I want. Kathy Arbor, so if you think of a certain subject, you should be able to see that, such as monsters, flowers, and peoples. Did I miss, did I miss Hottie? Hottie Popo coming in? Oh no, Popeye. Okay. Journey saying hi to Barbara. Okay. That's right, Kathy. Cool. Okay. I'm going to pull out any blue. Just deepening some of these areas. This one's this one here. This is a little more red. come around this way and then I'm going to use this color and come around this way these are just fun to do if you want it for a certain purpose like Kathy Burke was saying if you look at it with a certain um so say you're working on a flower journal or a garden journal and you wanted some some abstract -y kind of floral accent to add to a page or a tag or to include in a tuck spot. You can maybe draw that out with the, you know, what you see. Does anybody else see that face or is it just me? That's why Lori seen faces. I see faces. I've been working on faces. 
Let's get that bigger brush. I was thinking about doing owls. I haven't done owls in a while. I'm getting getting itching to do some owls. Now I have no idea. Kathy Burke says yes. What is in your interests of your mind is what you'll see. Hey Vanessa, welcome, welcome. All right, so let's see this blue one. I don't know. I'm not still not seeing the owl. Trying to switch my brain here. But you could really just um let's do let's do um let's see, let's pick one of these other ones. Let's pick this purple one. You could really just start outlining the lines. You see a mask? Like in this one, Vanessa? Yeah, that's kind of what I saw. Okay, so I'm going to take my liner brush that I have here and my ink. The owl on that blue one looks like a cat to me. Gosh. Gosh, I'm just not seeing that. I want to see it. I want to see it. All right, I've got my ink. Inker dinker over to the side there. This is not my best liner brush, but we're going to go with it. And some of these. Devin said, I see a profile of a devil <laughs> coming from the right side of this purple one. What does that say about me? It says, Miss Devin, that you have a very vivid imagination. There is a horse left of the cat on the blue one. Oh my gosh. I cannot believe you're seeing all this stuff in this blue one. I see a mouth and a chin and a big nose there. What if I flip it? All right, wait a minute. I want to mark it. So this is where we had the top. So now I'm going to flip this one. Let's see what you see. And you can make all kinds of marks too, right? Kathy Burke says, I see the cat now on the blue one. And Devin can now see the horse. Teresa sees the horse. To which I say, a horse is a horse, of course, of course. And of course, you can add to these, okay? You can add collage. You can stencil. You can add your tape transfers.
Now with these, you can, you know, like here, you can just paint in whatever. You know, if you see a spot and you want to paint it in, paint it in. So you get the idea, right, on this one. I'm just following the main lines that I see, the creases that the uh, plastic wrap caused. Just call me Angel. What is the brush you are using? I am using, it's so old and ratty, I don't know if I can see. Hold, please. Let's get the readers on. Oh, that doesn't help. I am using a uh, Royal and Langnickel Zen. This is a number one, I believe, round. And it's uh, a longer, it's a, um, a longer liner. It's not a short liner, it's a long liner. I obliterated your devil. Devil with the blue dress, blue dress, blue dress. Teresa sees the purple angel. Devil with the blue dress on. Do, 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 do. I don't see nothing in this one. Nothing. And I'm not seeing much in this here blue one. I want to see it. I want to see it. So this is the direction that, yeah, that most of you saw those other things. Hmm. Like a kitty cat, the kitty cat. Okay, Lori Devin sees the devil and I see an angel. So which is it? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, a lot of times on, um, you know, you're sitting somewhere, you see some tile or you see um, some wallpaper or something, you know, and, you know, you find an image, you know, people look at clouds. I see stuff in clouds. So my daughter's house, her bathroom, she's got a pretty large size bathroom, but it, they haven't remodeled. They're working on remodeling downstairs. So I go in to use the bathroom. Oh, I guess it wasn't the last time I was there. Maybe the time before that. And I come out and I say to her, the tile in your bathroom. And she looks at me. I said, there's chickens. There's chickens everywhere. She said, oh, yeah, you haven't seen that before. Bye, Barbara. Thanks for coming. I appreciate you. Thank you. Have a good day. Okay, Teresa's got to run. Uh-oh, she's got bad weather. She's got to run to safety. Be careful, Teresa. An artist that uses his or her, her art that is amazing is Tanya Sell. Love her art. Okay, there's another one for us to, to look up and find. Thanks, Kathy, for telling us that. All right, let's see here. All right, so I got about a half an hour. So I'd like to give you a little bit of a, a little bit of wiggle room before Kathy comes on. Kathy Arbor will be on at one Eastern. This is the one that I did the um, matte medium one. I got a little bit of texture on this one. Well, I'm not really seeing too much in there either. Maybe if I flip it. See, I mostly see in this one, like, roots and a tree. Um, this could be, like, maybe a witch on a broomstick. I see a, I see a hood, a hood there, and her little bum and her little cape that she's wearing. But you can use the pen, too. You don't have to use the, um, you know, a paintbrush. 
Thank you, Devin. This one, I kind of see a lake and some trees and brush and then some trees up this way, but like trees that are like stretched and pulled. Let's try the pen. You see a cat hiding in the center. Vanessa sees a fox. Okay, which one, girls? The the brown? Tell me where you're seeing these. The brown, or the uh, this is a more like a, a yeah, greeny greenish yellow. See a cat hiding in the. I better cap up this ink before I give it a knock. What does the fox say? F O X fox. I think you might have been talking about that one. The brown one. Yeah, that's what I thought. The blue upside down, I see a fox in the upper left hand corner, says Kathy Berg. It's funny that that you all are seeing kind of the same things you know it's funny to me that in a a, a vast variety of a crowd several of you would see a fox kathy said she sees only a meadow more than a lake due to the color mm -hmm, mm -hmm. hmm Oh, I think I see the devil. A pointy chin and two slanty little eyes and kind of and horns. I see a shovel here. This looks like a stretched out leg. Could be of an animal, but I don't see an animal head. Turn it. Turn the blue one. Kathy Berg, this is the way we had it originally. Turn the blue one this way. I didn't see the devil on the blue one. Maybe he's following us. That's why I say devil with the blue dress, blue dress, blue dress. Probably stop wiggling the. Okay. So now if I use my pen, which makes it easier. You know, to follow along some of these little lines. One more time, Kathy says. There we go. Bring that camera down a little. Maybe you can see a little. A little more better. Kind of just reminds me of like swamp trees, maybe in the bayou. Like they're all like kind of stretched. You know how they stretch? Vanessa sees birds in the blue one. Okay, now Kat says turn it again. All right. So now we're upside down. This was the top originally. So it's upside down. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. And then you can use your watercolor pencils or whatever you want, like the shade, 
you know, if you really wanted to get into making one of these into like a, you know, a real picture. There is the fox's nose and his eye. Kathy's going to be right back. I see it too, says Leah. You could turn it into a few different animals with similar face shapes. I'm going to, sh I'm not going to do this anything to this one. I'm going to show it to my husband and see if he can see it. And maybe he can see it and then point it out to me where it is. It's very interesting, isn't it? Very interesting. Let's see this one. Same thing. I kind of see an eye here, a big mouth. This is like a smushed nose, another eye, and kind of like some eyebrows. <laughs> Bobby doesn't see a devil, too. No, hubby would be more like seeing an angel. Look, he's got a pointy chin. I mean, he's bad looking. That That's bad looking. Let's turn this one sideways. Anyway, it's a fun exercise. Kathy says, upper left corner, nose is more in the middle. Upper left hand corner, nose is more in the middle. You know, at some point, I'm going to just look away and look at that and bam, I'll see it. Is it a tiny nose? Because I see like a little tiny spot here and two little eyes. And like, you know how a fox has that color that comes down kind of there. Now Devin sees the pig with a hairy back when Lori held the pink one horizontally. If nothing else, this is a good exercise in stretching your mind and your imagination. I feel like I really... Uh, I'm kind of short-sighted in that area um and that's something i need to to work on Lori, watch the replay you might oh that's true too leah that's a very good suggestion um a good exercise in stretching your mind and what you can see and almost like a visual mind map kind of thing you know which Didi's always telling us to um you know mind map things you know, we need Janet Young to do this so we can see what <laughs> that could be trouble or that could be hilarious. Well, either way, it would be hilarious, right? All right. So let me do a little bit of a recap here. So I started out by saying um, Karen O'Brien the now see I don't think I have my book here. I think I have my book. Oh, let me see. Nope, I do have it here. Hold on. My last two lives I was concentrating on the art style of oh we're gonna have a craft lunch. Here we go. Art style of Karen O'Brien and her book Imaginary Characters. And so I did two pages of that. Uh, Lori, look at Messenger. You will see the cat and the horse on the blue top. Up. All right. Hold on. Hold, please. Go there. Go there. Hmm. Oh, I see the horse. I'm not sure I see the cat, but I definitely see the horse. Oh, thanks, Journey. Ah! 
I do see the cat. See, the cat looks like a fox to me. I think that's a little face. I was looking much larger, I think. Thanks, Journey. Oh, you guys are great. So, as the springboard from, you know, some of the, the things we tried here in um, Karen's book, was she suggested 100 faces to take index cards, take a pack of index cards. And so I'm using three by five. She's using four by six. Use what you have. If you don't have index cards, cut up some paper. So now I just started putting some other shapes in. I'm numbering my cards. Oops, looks like this one. I'm numbering my cards because I'm anal and that's just, that's just the way I am. She recommends you use a pen to just sketch some faces. Um, I tried that. That's not for me. I like to fuss a little bit. I like to do some shading. I like using my pencil and using either a Q-tip or, um, you know, a tertillion or whatever they call them, like the little paper stump. You can use your finger. You could use the tissue if you, if you like to do that kind of thing. It's, it's messy. But as you can see, some of them, I'm not always using her. See, that's the one I did in ink. I'm not always using her style eye either. I've used a couple different. Now, of course, I can't find one. But it's just to see how many faces you can come up with. See, this one I use a different style eye. Yeah, I saw the little cat. Yeah. Um, so you don't have to use her style eye either. Just start drawing, as Kathy Arbor would say, draw, draw, draw. Just start drawing something. So I'm working on that. So let me know if you're doing the same thing, if you're doing 100 faces. Um, I would like to know that. That would be great fun for me to know. And uh, then I started off this morning with showing you something I found as I was picking up some of the stuff in my room and we folded several of these little folios where you end up with two pockets. Oh, you're welcome, Leah. I appreciate your being here. Thanks so much. And you have a pocket there, pocket there. And I think I'm going to try stitching a few little pages in the center of one of these. But you can glue them down into a journal. So we did a couple of different book pages that I had. And then one of the girls was saying that, uh-oh, look, I found another one. This one I dripped. Uh, one of the girls was saying a cootie catcher. So if you make it square, you'll have that toy that we used to play with some of us when we were kids scrapbook paper the double-sided is nice of course this is more of a heavy duty kind of little book but you can add some ribbons so that ties shut and uh, you know put in some tags some tickets so that might be something fun for you to try and really it's a fairly easy fold i'm going to do this one turn this inside out you're welcome, Devin. Have a great day. And then we did some tape transfers. And before we did that, oh, I did that first, I guess. And then I had done some collage and mixed media stuff myself. And then I saw that face. And so we worked on this a little bit. I got quite a, I got quite a lot done today for me. You take care as well, Journey. Have a great day. And I think my favorite transfer was the napkin, which I didn't know you could do that. So I've still got some stuff to play with here. So Kathy Arbor will be on at 1 Eastern. So you've got a little bit of time. If it's the time of day for you grab something to eat get another beverage have a little tinkle okay get yourself all situated if you got to run the sweeper do it real quick so you can come back and relax and enjoy kathy arbor because she's quite talented all right so thanks for being with me hanging out i appreciate it so very much so today oh thank you pam 
And there's others today streaming. Let's see. I think it is the third Thursday. I think I finally hit the third Thursday. So um, APG Jamie should be on. Later tonight, Beth will be on. I think PM Studio might be on. Right, Devin? Is PM Studios on? And uh, I might be getting confused. Lisa Jameson, I don't know if she's Wednesday or Thursday. You know, so there's just check it out. You probably all have your own list. You have your own favorites. So just make sure you stop by, hit the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe. It helps us small channels. Miriam will be on. Okay, great. That's Art Delicious. Art Delicious by Miriam or something like that. She's got a crazy name too, right? I can't remember them all. We'll just blame it on my age. So thanks again for being here. I'll see you all soon. Take care. Have a great rest of your day. Great rest of your week. I'll see you on Sunday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern. And don't forget, take time to be creative and enjoy the journey. And I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.